Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager, Wayne Eric Boyd, along in the program as well. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, Grandview University collected their fifth straight title in the NEI division of the multi-divisional national duels. How did Grandview take over the division so quickly? I think it starts right with Nick Mitchell. He, he's proven time and time again that he's able to find an extra gear out of these guys. I mean, so, so often, you know, kids go to a, you know, a D3 program, D2 program, even Division One, and they just they seem to find a way to lose their way. But he just ha absolutely motivates them to be the best they possibly can on and off the mat. All right, but you're not in the room. How do you know it's all Mitchell? I mean, have you, have you heard his graduates talk about wrestling or just living that lifestyle? You know, Mitchell makes these guys champions on and off their their grades are really good their their home lives are really good off i mean they i haven't heard of anybody getting in trouble at grandview since he's been there you know in the news or anything all right speaking of long winning streaks warkberg collected their sixth straight dual title in division three were you surprised i mean does having dominating teams like this hurt these lower divisions I'm not surprised that they won. I mean, this is their sixth straight. I think it hurts the schools below them for recruiting purposes. And as far as, do you mean, do you mean viewership? As far as the, the amount of eyes that are watching this division? Yeah, do Division One fans not pay attention to the lower divisions because it's pretty much the same thing every single year? I guess that, you know, that's a point. I mean, these divisions have, they do, I mean, they have a real strong following. I mean, the, the families, the, the schools, they're going to come out there. But, uh, it, you know, it'd be maybe a case study to figure out if, Division one fans are actually paying attention to Division three, and if if not, is it because we always know who's going to be that top two team? Uh, there's Augsburg and there's Warburg. All right. Well, here's another one for you. What would it do to the sport? What would it do for the sport, perhaps, to move it back to the Unidome and unify all divisions? That that was when it was the best. I mean, that that is where it needs to go, if possible. I know there's lots of outside different issues to possibly make that happen, but. It was great for fans, and the biggest thing is we just need to make it consistent. It needs to be consistently in one spot every year, and uh, to, to move away from that, it, just, it was really confusing to me. All right, well, you know what they say, uh, everything old is new again. Will we see that? I don't know, but if we do, I'll be a fan for sure. I mean, it's, it definitely. I mean, time and time again, people have said, hold events in Iowa. It, it will be a success. The Big Tens are here. The World Team Trials are here. It's not a guarantee that it will be, but I mean, track record. They've got a tracker, a proven tracker. I mean, grapple with the gridiron, successful. Aegon was successful. Standalone event, never been done in Iowa, successful. Night of Conflict had a thousand people there. I mean, there's probably more people at the Night of Conflict, the high school duel, than there was at the NWCA national duels. Well, King University defeated Oklahoma City 27 to 19, and what intrigues me the most about watching the women's division is seeing them wrestle freestyle. Why do the women wrestle freestyle and the men wrestle folk style? I mean, is there a right reason? I, I don't know why they do. I, I think women just were not accepted in the folk style life. I mean, I think that's the real honest. I'm going to tell you what. Okay. I talked with Coach Miller. I talked with several of the coaches. When they started women's wrestling, they voted. They said, why do we want to wrestle in two disciplines? Let's just start freestyle and not even address the folk style issue. And it was settled right then and there. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing women's wrestling at the collegiate level contribute so greatly to the international level. That's our opinion, and we're sticking to it. I mean, it, it, it's a, it is the, I mean, it's the reason why women have been successful. They have not finished lower than fifth in the world championships since 2010. All right, we've got to take a quick time out. Didn't mean to interrupt you there. We'll find out what's going on at the Olympic Training Center, but that's after the break. Stick around. You're watching DWN. All right, welcome back to GWN. We're just six months out from the Olympic team trials and the freestyle national squad is getting ready in the Springs. USA Wrestling's Gary Abbott and Richard Immel recently caught up with the head coach and four world medalists. Here's Bruce Burnett, Kyle Snyder, Jake Varner, Jordan Burroughs, and James Green at the training camp. It went really well. Look, it's 2016 and they know it. If something happened uh, January 1st to them and they're ready to go. They came in uh, eager to learn, eager to work, and uh, it's just been a blessing being able to work with them. And, uh, and they're on track. And on track obviously means 
there's improvement going on and improvement ahead, right? That's I mean, right. Imp but, improvement in the technical aspect of it, the tactical, the strategy. Uh, they're working hard right now on the positions and situations that are happening in freestyle right now, and they're getting better. They're getting better in the positions that they have to get better in. And we know in, in 89 days from today, at the Olympic trials, at that point, we're going to get our team. We're going to bring them all together. One team, one fight, one goal. It was a great training camp. You know, we got on the mat a total of 14 times, you know, uh, twice a day, every single day, and wrestled a couple times on the weekend, too. So I feel like I learned a lot, not only from the coaches, but from the, some of the great training partners that we had here. And, um, you know, it just anytime you can wrestle with somebody new and fresh and get a different feel every day, it's just going to improve your wrestling because you got to figure out you know, their positions and still get to your stuff. So you went on an Olympic red shirt and then we get a press release and a story right at the end of the year, beginning of the new year. You know, you're going to wrestle for Ohio State this year. Talk about that decision and also what it's going to be like wrestling heavyweights. I mean, it's a different weight class, right? For sure, yeah, it's a different weight class. Basically, um, people thought I was getting, like, bored or... Uh, <laughs> You know, I wasn't getting enough matches, which is a little true. I, I like competing a lot, but I was happy with my Olympic red shirt, and I felt like I was improving uh, freestyle and my freestyle wrestling a lot. But nothing's going to change because of this decision. I'm still going to be wrestling freestyle every day. I'm still going to be competing at the Oregon and Medved and uh, still going to be coming to all these camps. But now the coaches have gotten me a schedule where I can do all that and also I can compete for the Ohio State Buckeyes, wrestling a few collegiate matches at heavyweight and um, it might be, it's going to be a little different wrestling the bigger guys, but I wrestle Travell every day and our two heavyweights at Ohio State and Zach Ray, and those are some tough heavyweights, so I feel comfortable moving around that weight. You know, I, I went and fix, you know, do what I needed to do to, to get ready for this year. You know, this is the important year, so, um, you know, no matter if you're sitting out, if you're wrestling through the tournament, I've been on both sides, you still got to win the trials. So, uh, you know, it's still not easy. Um, you got to be on your game. You got to be ready to go. So um, that's what makes it fun in this sport. You know, you got when you got depth like that, and you got guys in there that, that can win. You know, it, it makes it fun to watch. Obviously, in the end, only one guy gets to step out there, and and that's the downfall of it, and that's the part that sucks about it. But you know, that's the way it goes, and and um, so you know, it's it'll be exciting to see. What are you working on this uh, this particular training camp? Parterre. We're doing a lot of parterre this week, and so we've done a lot of transitions from turns or takedowns to turns, a lot of leg lace defense, leg lace offense, gut defense, gut offense, just some little tricks in there. and uh, It's difficult, dude. It's hard to progress. Like Once you reach a certain level, it's hard to continuously get better from that level. And so like I'm just trying to make little dynamic switches in my wrestling abilities, going harder from certain positions, knowing how to move my hips and maneuver my body to be better defensively. But, you know, parterre, one thing for offense, you gotta get a takedown, and for defense, you gotta get taken down. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a difficult transition, but I'm pretty good on my feet, so I feel comfortable there. It's been pretty good. Um, this camp's my first camp for since, I've, since the World Championships, and um, not like other camps where we, you know, come in learn some things and then wrestle a lot. We've been doing a lot of technique and, um, you know, they put the video together of the World Team Championship or World Championships and um, take a lot of stats. So you kind of go in areas that, you know, guys should work on. And um, for me, since I've just kind of getting into freestyle, I've been doing it for two, three years now, um, doing a lot of parterre, a lot of leg laces, a lot of gut wrench, um, offense and defense. So it's been great. All right, we're going to take quick time out. Coming up, it's As I See It with the one and only... Hollywood. Wayne, Hollywood Wayne Boyd, you're right. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Well, we gave him last week off, but Wayne Boyd is back. Here's a conversation I had earlier today. With the newest edition of As I See It, it's Wayne Boyd. Wayne, how are you? Got any better, Scott? It never changes. I'd have to be two people, baby. In New York for seven solid days, moving and shaking. A lot of our people in New York are excited about wrestling. Very excited. A lot of topics to cover. First up, your recent trip to New York. The NCAAs are heading there in March. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a great tournament. I mean, we've got six returning champions that I can think of. We've got Kyle Snyder now, who's 
re-entered the race and coming in at heavyweight. I mean, you know, for a world champion at 215 pounder, he's probably going to be at about 230 pounds. Going to be very strong there, but he's got he's got the great one who's Did trying to win his third uh, national title. Nick Gwizdowski. Nick Gwizdowski, no no uh, stranger to freestyle wrestling, no stranger to uh, uh, NCAA wrestling. Uh, great matchup there. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Martinez well, is probably the hottest guy in the NCAAs leading the field. We're going to get some surprises from him right after uh, the NCAA championships that I've been asked not to talk about. But I might give you a few hints uh, as we talk about, uh, you know, some of these other guys. But Thomas Sello comes back defending. He's only a sophomore. One is a freshman. Do we have another four-timer brewing with Martinez? Wrestling is picking up the pace. Uh, Derringer is untouchable, it appears. Uh, Oklahoma State's Derringer. Nobody's going to touch him. Brewer is going to have his hands full. He's already been, uh, he got pinned by the kid from Oklahoma State, but he's out of the fray with a terrible leg injury. Uh, who did we miss? What, Gabe a, what about Gabe Dean? Uh, you know, McIntosh from Penn State's not going to Go lightly. He was a great champion. Uh, uh, California wrestler. We got a couple of California wrestlers. Who's the other one? Oh, Martinez. Martinez is a California wrestler. You yeah. And we got all the high school state meets coming up. I'm telling you, the, the future uh, in collegiate wrestling, high school wrestling, unbelievable. The kids that are coming out of high school. How about the Valencians? Seniors in high school wrestled in all the big events, taking a red shirt at Arizona State. They're going to be hot next year. I can tell you this. Going into 2020, Wrestling in America will lead the world. I really think we've positioned ourselves to beat the Russians, to beat the Iranians. I'm committed to winning the Iranian championship next year. We're going to take the A team, and we'll take like an Olympic team. Uh, what about 65 kilos? Oh, my gosh. Metcalf, Oliver, Steber, Pico, Green. And there might be a surprise visitor at 65 kilos in April. All so right, so let's practice. let's let's recap NCAA's Madison Square Garden, the return of six NCAA champions, including Brewer, Gwizdowski, Tomasello, Daringer, Martinez, and Dean. And then, of course, uh, you had other rather significant meetings, most notably with the jersey you're wearing right now. It seemed to be quite obvious that Under Armour is entering the picture. Under Armour is going to move into wrestling in a big way. It, I've been waiting for a corporate sponsor. They're a $4 billion company. We're, we're not dealing, you know, with uh, anything except corporate. So they like wrestling. They particularly like women's wrestling, which is a nice surprise. Uh, there could be a shoe on the horizon. But I can tell you this right now. Uh, Under Armour is coming through Titan Mercury. And we're going to make a heck of a presentation at the uh, Olympic team trials. Uh, you'll be able to get uh, Under Armour gear probably this month at uh, Titan Mercury's website, TMC1, TMWC1.com, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, right? TMWC1.com. You know, can't remember my own stuff. But these guys are doing a job. We all know that we had an incredible performance at the U.S. Open. Uh, I'm looking for four guys at the Titan Mercury to make this Olympic team. And, uh, you know, at uh, 57, I think it's going to come down to uh, it's going to come down to Ramos and Dennis. And, uh, you know, they're both from Iowa. Uh, Hawk Strauss will be in the fray. Uh, 65's unreal. I mean, I've already talked a little about that, uh, but I think I think the guy to beat there is either Green, Metcalf, or my my surprise, and I've kind of talked a little around that, so some people are getting it. And then we move to seventy four. I think Hal's going to actually give uh, give uh, Burroughs a little trouble, but Burroughs likes trouble. I don't see anybody beating Burroughs. He's the greatest wrestler in the world right now. We need to keep him going. Love to see him win another Olympic championship, going to win another world championship outdistance John Smith, and that just opens the door for the next guy who wants to be the best. All right, thanks, Wayne. Stay tuned. There's more wrestling news and highlights right after the break. It's GWN.
Well, after being embarrassed by Virginia Tech earlier in the year, Iowa State got their shot at redemption at the Virginia Duels this last weekend. Did the Cyclones have the talent to be a top 10 team? Iowa State, a top 10 team. What do you think? Uh, they wrestled great. Tanner Weatherman continued to wrestle tough after a, a great Midlands. I, I think they're a better dual team than a, a tournament team. I, I can't tell them that they're going to be up top 15 just at this point yet. Virginia Tech ranked seventh in the tournament rankings. Shouldn't this give rankers some more confidence in them? I mean, to, to, to be up towards that top 15, I think the biggest difference is they just have to have more consistency. Coach Jackson says it all the time that they need to be more consistent. Fans saying they need to be more consistent. In order to be considered in the top 10, they have to be wrestling like this throughout the rest of the year. I like to say I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. This opinion's for real. Travis Paulson weighed in on the difference between then and now. I think it's just constant uh, Im improvement throughout the season. I mean, coming back from a 32-3 to loss to be able to beat them in midway point just kind of shows guys believing in the plan. Uh, I mean, have faith in us because we're uh, we're starting to build something special. We got some stud recruits coming in next year. We got the guys wrestling really well in the second half of the season, and uh, we're moving in the right direction. All right, Michigan hands Ohio State their second dual loss of the season in a heated rivalry, 21 to 11. The score. Is it a similar situation where we have a better dual team than a tournament team? I, this one shocked me. I mean, Wolverines just straight up worked the Buckeyes. Duels are a different animal, though. I, I think wrestlers feed off each other in a setting like this, and, and we saw that happen here at Michigan. All right, seeing results like this, do you enjoy duels more than you do tournaments? I'm a huge fan of duels for many, many reasons. Uh, the biggest reason is as a wrestler, you, you're, you get more hype, you, you get to feed off each other. As a fan, you get to see that interaction and you, you, you kind of feel that. And um, you know, as a coach, you, you have opportunities to make strategies and, and you know, really see your wrestlers grow and at meets like this. That's, uh, that's what these coaches live for. Well, Cornell was leading 17-10 with two bouts remaining, and it was Missouri's Willie Nicholas and Jaden Cox who came up big for the Tigers. Yeah, tied with a minute left to see a stall point to determine Willie Nicholas' match. It's something I love to see. That's something that we've been ca calling and calling these uh, officials to, to make that call, and, and they did it. He won by that stall point, and uh, the biggest match of the night, though, was Jaden Cox. Uh, he had four takedowns in the third period with the most important one coming at the end to get that tech ball. I mean, wow, what a finish for Jaden Cox in, in that environment. I mean, you really just love doing it. This, this is the reason why. This is this exact situation. I mean, Brian Smith had to bump up, and this is something that that concept would have never happened at a tournament. Strategy comes into play, and, and that's what keeps people watching this sport. All right, news on Drew Periano, the former Northwestern University head coach, recently said that he will come back an even stronger, an even stronger coach, that is. Where could he land? I'd like to see him help start up that Fresno State team that, that we've been hearing about. When is it going to start up? I mean, you know these situations better than me, Scott. I mean, where do you think he would be a good fit? I think you nailed it. Fresno State is the place I want to see him, either that or with the New York Giants. The New York Giants, yeah. he's, he's got the, the confidence to take on a football team. I think he could take on anybody right now. Drew Periano is as hungry as they come, but no, seriously, I believe Fresno State could benefit from uh, the optimism and also the coaching and the recruiting that goes along with it. All right, next up, news out of Stillwater. Less than a week after we found out that Kay Brock was out, we find out that both Chance Marsteller and Austin Schaefer will be out for the season as well. These two for disciplinary actions. What do you make of the recent news from Oklahoma? I mean, Marsteller tweeted out, not a quitter, but I'm done with this sport. It no longer needs me, and I no longer will suffer from it. You know, this is tough to see uh, for me uh, out of a young man to say this about just his life and sport. These guys are, are just under extreme pressures. If something happened to ha happen off the mat for him to tweet something like this. So it'll be interesting to see if some more details come about it. But, uh, you know, I, I hope he finds uh, the right home. And I do as well whether that's in Stillwater or wherever that may be. The, I hope it's still. The coaches are going to be calling, that's for sure. Well, I would be. Yeah, he, there, he's got some people following him now that weren't following him before, so his phone's got to be blowing up. I mean, obviously we need to figure out what happened, but I, I guarantee that those coaches are going to be calling. You know what this means? Wrap it up. We're out of time. For our executive producer, Andrew F. Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd, and my partner in crime, of course, Tony Hager. I'm Scott Casper from Studio 3B. We'll see you next week right here on Global Wrestling News.